Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be doing a little bit more work on the robotic snowplow project. Ultimately, what I want to accomplish in this video is get the actuator for the shovel working. It's going to be snowing here in the next few days, so with the actuator working, I can do everything I need to actually test it out in some real snow and kind of ultimately assess where to go from there. So um, let's get started. First, I wanted to talk a little bit about linear actuators. In front of me, I have a couple of them right here. I also have the one on the wheelchair. These are a little different. These are just from the parts bin. Um, both of these were pulled from wheelchairs. I think these are either seat actuators or like tilt actuators. These are relatively common and relatively inexpensive. I think um, you know something like either of these is only going to go for like twenty to fifty dollars on eBay, and these can lift quite a bit of weight. I want to say you know easily a couple hundred pounds, and really all they are is just a good size beefy DC motor, usually a twelve or twenty four volt motor, and there's a worm gear. And then there's just a rod that is connected to the worm gear that goes in and out. This one is really basic and really simple. It just has two connections for the motor. So you just put 24 volts in there and it goes out. You flip it around, it goes back in. Nice and simple. This one is similar, but a little bit more complicated. You see it kind of has this collar on here. This actually has some wires that feed back to the actual motor here, and essentially this is limit switches. This one doesn't have any kind of limit switches, so when you just keep going um, with it, it'll just keep going out, keep going out, and then it'll just start kind of spinning because there's really nothing to stop it. And likewise, when you go all the way in, it will kind of um, basically stall out the motor because it can't go in any further. This one has probably just some basic limit switches inside this housing, and when it goes too far in, it'll hit a switch, stop it from moving in that direction, and vice versa when it goes in the other direction. What's interesting about this one is, if you're familiar with motors, if you look really closely at this motor, this is basically a windshield wiper motor. So it's kind of interesting that they're using a um, modified windshield wiper motor into this assembly. So that's kind of cool. Um, but these drive just like any other normal motor. If you put voltage into the pins, it will go one way. You switch their polarity and it goes the other way. So what I'm going to do to drive the actuator on the snowplow is I'm going to use just a motor driver. Um, I could use something like the RoboClaw, but I don't need anything that powerful. So I'm going to go with something a little bit smaller and a little bit simpler. This project was a perfect excuse to try out one of these Pololu simple motor drivers. I've been meaning to buy one of these for quite some time, and I bought a couple of them for this project. They're really good at controlling this actuator, albeit they might be a little overkill for it, but it was just a good excuse to get one of these and try it out. This is the 18V7, and this accepts up to 30 volts DC for the um, voltage for the motor, and it can handle 7 amps worth of current. So, you know, it can handle a pretty good sized motor for such a small form factor. In terms of um, control inputs, it has an RC input, which I'm using right now with the RC receiver here. It also does RS-232, so you can control this with something like an Arduino or other microcontroller. And in addition, it accepts a um, analog input, so you can just use a basic potentiometer to control this as well. As you see, it has a USB port on here, so you can connect this back to the software that it comes with and do all the configuration. One of the other cool things I like about this is it has um, inputs for not only um, like an end stop, but um, you can do some other things on here. So like the actuator itself has no feedback loop in it whatsoever. So when it gets to the end, it just kind of spins. You could connect a switch up to this that when it hits a certain point, the switch is activated and it will tell the motor controller to stop moving. So that's kind of cool that it has a little bit of feedback built in. So I've just got this connected into the RC receiver here. I've got power going into from um, basically the RoboClaw. It's just um, daisy chained off of that. And then I have the leads going out to these um, little Wego spring terminals I love so much. And then going into the actuator. So if I take my little transmitter here and move the joystick, I can go out and I can go in. So that's really all there is to it. It's just controlled like a normal motor would be controlled. So now that this is working, um, I need to get the mounts for the actual shovel figured out and then mount the shovel into the actuator. 
If you remember back to the end of part one, I printed out um, these little attachments for the shovel assembly. And they worked like okay, but they really weren't that great. The problem was is that these little fingers were way too weak and there was a lot of strain right there. So this would attach something like that. And then this would attach to the toe hooks with this little clamp. I was thinking I could get enough clamping force off of this to effectively fix it at the tow hook, but as soon as you hit anything on the driveway, you would easily just rip it back like that. And also, the amount of force that the actuator has is pretty high, so even pulling back on the actuator, it would want to rise like that on the tow hook, no matter how hard you clamp that down. So that was a bit of an issue. The other issue was that you had two points of movement. You moved along the tow hook like that, and then it could also move back and forth along the um, shovel like that. So those two points of movement really weren't ideal. I did like the clamp mechanism though, however. So what I did is I modified these to be a little bit stronger and also fixed. The thing I like so much about the Actobotics channel is with all of these holes, it gives you the flexibility to do something like this. So all I did is I took this original design and I built it up a little bit with these little risers. So now it connects into two different points on the channel, a lot more stable, and it gives me the ability to kind of set that angle. So in SolidWorks, all I did is just do this riser and then I put the holes you know, perfectly vertical and then I just kind of add an offset and then ultimately decided what kind of angle I wanted for the shovel. So these worked out pretty well and then it used the same clamping mechanism to clamp onto to the tow hook. So now I have the one point of movement and I can just pull from the top of the shovel back with the actuator and move it up and down. So these worked really well. And in testing, I broke a lot of these and I have yet to break any of these. These are actually pretty strong. Um, I get wheel slippage if this digs into something before they snap, so that's pretty good. So then it was just a matter of reattaching this new shovel assembly to the chassis. So now I've got the actuator actuating. I've got the shovel attached nice and solid and it moves up and down freely. So that's pretty cool. So now all I need to do is connect this to this. For that, I'm going to use more Actobotics channel. It's just a nice simple thing to use. So I gotta connect something kind of here and I gotta connect something there. For this side, I printed out this little sleeve. The inside diameter matches the diameter of this linear actuator rod. And then I have a hole that matches the hole size of the Actobotics channel. And then this just kind of sets inside the channel just like that. It took a little bit of sanding to get it to where it fit nice and perfect, but worked out okay. So the idea is that this just slides along the channel like that. You um, line up the inner holes and then this slides over top of it and then I'll just have a screw to secure that. So now I have a nice solid rail that can't go anywhere and this can go in and out. And also this um, allows me a little point of adjustment because I can adjust at any one of these holes. So that's kind of cool. For this side, I actually just took a piece of the handle cut it off on the bandsaw, this gets shoved down inside of here, and then I have a little hole that I drilled through it right there. So then I can mount through there, mount through there, and then I have my shovel actuation. So let me um, just go ahead and hook all this up and get this moving. Everything is connected, the controller is on. Let's see what happens. Nice, so that works out pretty smooth. And it goes all the way down to the ground and actually it even lifts the wheels slightly up off the ground. And then we move it back, it lifts it up. 
It's not the fastest thing in the world, but these um, linear actuators never really are. And that's probably enough lift for right now. So yeah, not bad. Uh, next step is to test it with some snow. I was rushing to get the snow plow finished enough so that I could at least test it with some snow because we were supposed to get some snow in the next few days. However, what I didn't really realize is that we were getting more than a foot of snow. So unfortunately, this is kind of a worst case test because I really didn't think it was gonna be capable of um, handling this much snow and I was right. It's no surprise that traction was really the issue here. The chassis is relatively heavy and the motors have plenty of power, but just getting that traction to be able to push that much snow, especially, you know, a good foot worth of snow was really difficult for it. Later on, I tried um, putting a couple screws into the wheels because they're just these um, kind of foam filled core tires. Um, so they're not pneumatic tires, so you can just kind of um, drill directly into them. And I had a bunch of screws into the wheels and it actually did help quite a bit. I think if I got like a good pattern of screw heads all along the tires, I probably could have gotten a lot more traction. But the concept of taking this out and driving it the length of the driveway and plowing, you know, a whole swath of snow away really just was not going to happen. Maybe for, you know, one or two inches, it could probably um, handle that. But definitely for the amount of snow that we had, there's no way it could be able to push that amount of snow. This will most likely conclude the robotic snowplow series as um, I'm probably not going to put a whole lot more effort into this right now. I'm still going to go and drive it the next time we get like, you know, one or two inches worth of snow and see if it performs any better. And if it performs really nicely, then I'll definitely let you know. But for right now, it's really not saving me any time. It would take, oh, I don't know, about a year to plow the driveway like that. So. It's gonna sit here in the garage. I'm not gonna take it apart or do anything else with it for right now. It was a lot of fun to build. I've, um, I have a box of those linear actuators I've just collected over the years and I really haven't ever used them for anything. So, you know, it was kind of an excuse to use a linear actuator. It was an excuse to use one of the wheelchair chassis that I have. And it was, you know, kind of fun putting everything together. And it is still a blast to drive the thing around. So I'm really waiting for just like one inch of snow just to tear it up in the driveway. So it was still a lot of fun to make, but ultimately, having tracks, having much wider tires, um, a lot more weight. I think if that thing weighed 500 pounds or you know 800 pounds, I think it would make it through the snow a lot easier. But unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to go back to my very original idea of doing an actual um, snow blower because the idea is that that snow just builds up on that front plow and it just gets harder and harder to push with a um, snow plow, you'd be able to actually, um, or a snow blower, you'd be actually able to blow that snow away and get rid of it. So I might end up going the snow blower route instead. But in any event, this project was really fun and um, I learned a few things. So hopefully you guys got something out of it and I'll see you again next time in the next video. You can do it.